Just a month after the conclusion of the PDC World Darts Championships, we have the Labrooks Masters, and I think it's a perfect way to start the new season in the darts. The top 24 players officially on the rankings taking place live on ITV4 over three days of action. So the the big games, the big names are going to come at you thick and thick thick and fast. Um, it's a slightly new format for this year. It's normally the top 16 and from this year and beyond it's going to be the top 24. So that means that the top eight players in the rankings, Gerwin Price obviously at number one, those guys in the top eight get a bye straight into the second round. Similar to what happened in the World Championships. I'm genuinely really looking forward to this. I think it's, like I say, a great way to start the season with all of the top players and I know Matt Pyman Hill is as well so I will hand you over to the main man. Yeah, cheers, Adam. I am thoroughly looking forward to it, and feels like the uh, the old season has has just finished, and the new one is is soon to begin. Much to the delight of my girlfriend. Um, more darts on the TV screen soon enough. We have still got um, at time of filming uh, three weeks until this tournament starts, but nothing like getting the uh, excitement going early. This is going to be a cracking event. The Masters always uh, always produces. You only have to look back to last year. We had uh, Michael Van Gerwen going out to Johnny Clayton in the first round. We had plenty of last leg dramas. We had a 10-0 whitewash in the quarterfinals. Um, so it's a, it's a great tournament. It always produces some stories and shocks. And and last year, of course, Michael Smith missing tournament darts as Peter Wright lifted the title and, and backed up his world championship success. And Gerwin Price will be looking to do so again. He was beaten by Gary Anderson last year, ironically. Um, so yeah, that it, that could be an interesting one again. Can Gerwin Price follow in Peter Wright's footsteps and and back up his World Championship win with the first event of the new season? I think uh, the best way to do this is probably to get the draw bracket up in front of us because, as Adam says, they have already announced the bracket, so we could see all the players' routes to the final. I'm going to try and share that uh, with my uh, share screen, so you'll have to bear with me for a moment. Modern day um, technology. Well, while you're doing that, Pie Man, I'll run through the odds. Um, yeah, please do. Yeah, seamless. Yeah, absolutely. So, all the usual suspects at the top of the betting odds, like I say, a field of 24. Michael Van Gerwen is 5 to 2. Gerwin Price, the new world champion, is 11 to 4. Second favourite. Peter Wright, 13 to 2. Third favourite. Gary Anderson, 12. Vandenberg, 14. Aspinall, 16. Chisnell, who made some shocks in the shockwaves in the World Championships, E16s, and then it's 28s, Wade, and bigger the rest. One man I would note at this stage is the number nine seed, Michael Smith, who, um, thanks to his poor-ish, well, yeah, poor performance at the World Championship, he's actually got, a, he goes in at the first round here rather than rather than the second round as the ninth seed. Um, Gary Anderson is the man to benefit from that, and he is the eighth seed. So, yeah, Pine Man's got the draw bracket up, and, and like I say, there's, you can already see some some crackers and some potential crackers um, along the way. And we've already picked out a couple of names that we think might be worth betting at this early stage. And we'll come on to those shortly. And like I say, we'll probably be doing a, a more in-depth preview video before the action gets underway on Friday the 29th. What's your early thoughts, Pie Man? Yeah, well, as you say, the art of seduction uh, always leave them wanting a little bit more. We'll, we'll be uh, doing things a little bit nearer to the time, maybe sort of player-by-player -player analysis of of how they come into this tournament and and how they can, you know, perhaps perform in this tournament. But my initial thoughts, obviously a new format with uh, up in the field from 16 to 24. That's, as I've said in a few videos, testament to the quality we have in the field that there's there's not a single sort of weak looking player in this event. Um, you know, when you get into an event and you're looking at sort of Jeffrey Deswan as a weak player, you know you're in a really good tournament. Um yeah, it'll be interesting to see how people perform in relation to their World Championship efforts because Gerwin Price, very impressive in his final victory, obviously comes in as the world number one, but it's a whole new level of expectation on him now as the man to beat, the main man. He's been paired in the same bracket as the world number eight, which just had to be Gary Anderson. So we could have a repeat of the World Championship final. And as I mentioned, an event where Gary Anderson knocked Gerwin Price out last year. So plenty of history for them too, if, if they were to meet, but... I mean, look, you could talk about the depth in every section of the draw, but even that bit, for example, Joe Cullen versus Stephen Bunting as a first rounder. I mean, they're two of the best performers at the World Championship by a long way. Joe Cullen, grossly unfortunate to exit to MVG in that classic. And, and Stephen Bunting, a, a surprise semi-finalist. He's up to world number 17. So he's one of the players benefiting from the extended field. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting match. And, and Michael Smith, who, who should have won this 
last year. He missed three darts to win it in the final. He takes on Adrian Lewis, who's all at sea and, and just scrapes in as the 24th seed. So an interesting game there. Can Michael Smith bounce back from his world championship disappointment? And then I guess, Adam, if we were looking for ways into this, you might look at Rob Cross as a vulnerable seed there. And, yep. and he's going to play the winner of Glenn Durant, Merv King. I mean, that's a, another quality match, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rob Cross is ranked number four, and I think that's something to keep an eye on because he's, I don't, I can't see him being ranked number four in the order of merit come come the end of this year. Um, I know it works on a two-year basis, the rankings, and that um, you know includes some of his his earlier good form, but he's he's been out of form. It is that his, his ranking of number four as we speak right now is very much the the most false ranking that you can see on the screen there. I think that's. Um, it's a, it's a false ranking, but that's how it is at the moment. So yeah, that that does open it up. The, the, that Rob Cross segment does open it up, and you're thinking, well, Glenn Durant and Merv King, they can they would be favourites, or you know, you'd fancy them to beat Rob Cross. And um, I like Nathan Aspinall in that top quarter, if if you like, um, or top half. Um, I think that Aspinall will be um, Ian White or Mensor Sulevich, and then he's on to either Cross King or or Durant. So that would be my route in there. I think Aspinall's around a 16 to one shot, uh, 20 to one, best price 20 to one available. So that would be my idea of a runner there. And this is, sounds mad. And I tweeted about this the other day, right? Stephen Bunting made it to the semi-final of the PDC World Championships just last month. And he made a good run of it in the semi-final against the eventual winner. Um, it, I would go as far to say as on semi-final day of the four players, Stephen Bunting was the second best performer on that day and he didn't make the final. He was obviously in, in the wrong game. So Stephen Bunting for this tournament is 125 to 1. Now, yeah. I know that I know that he would potentially have to take on Gerwin Price in the, in the second round. Um, over a much shorter format, though, it, that would be a first to 10 game. The first round, just for the record, is... Um, um, Best of 11, second round, 19, quarters, 19, and then semis and finals, a best of 21. So it does get a little bit longer. So there is chance for really, you know, it's only first to six in the first round. We say this all the time get about the uh, the tour events or the floor events, as it were. They're often first to six and, you know, you can get a bit of a shot. But Stephen Bunting's 125 to one in this tournament. I just think that's an obscene price for what we've what we've seen last last week. I mean, for example, players that very much underperformed at the World Championships that are a shorter price, a much shorter price than Stephen Bunting. Mentor Sulevich is fifty to one. Rob Cross is forty to one. Jose de Souza disappointed forty to one. Michael Smith definitely disappointed thirty three to one. I mean, I mean James Wade twenty eight. To think that Stephen Bunting's one hundred and twenty five to one, I think that's massive. But he has got to take on Gerwin Price in the second round should he get past Joe Cullen. So I do like Nathan Aspinall. And then I'm, I, I, I'm certainly I'm going to, but I think Pine Man and myself are going to sound like a broken record um, this year. And um, we've already done a video, a little bit of a video about the Premier League and we put up Dimitri Vandenberg and it's going to be the same again from me. Dimitri Vandenberg comes into this as the 18th seed. Is that there? 10th uh, seed. Ten, sorry, 10th yeah. seed. Yeah. Sorry, 10th yeah. seed. So, um, plays Chris Doby in the first round should beat him. James Wade awaits in the second round. Potentially, you know, I would certainly have Vandenberg as favourite there. And then on to Van Gerwen. And we, Pine Man and myself had no fears of, of Dimitri taking on Van Gerwen in the world. So I've got no fears of that happening here in the Masters. Um, his top price 16 to 1 Vandenberg. And I think that, like I say, it could be a theme of our of our year from a betting perspective, Pine Man. Who did you like at the early prices? Yeah, I've got to agree with you on Dimitri, and I am worried I'm going to sound like a broken record. There will be some people who know I've been talking about Dimitri for years now. And yeah. I'm sure it feels like it as well. But um, no, I think, look, he did nothing wrong in defeat, did he, last time out? And uh, he, he showed the form that he's in. I think he averaged a, virtually averaged a ton in every game at the Worlds, and he did similar at the uh, at the previous TV event as well. So, um Look, there's no reason why you would fear Dimitri Vandenberg against any of these players. And and let's just remember that MVG was knocked out of this event in the first round last year. Going Price was knocked out. Yes, Peter Wright won it, but trust me, he scraped through a couple of those matches, including the final uh, where he survived match darts. So this is not an event to be afraid of taking on the big, the bigger players uh, or the, at the top of the market because you've got 24 world-class players who can beat anyone if they turn up with their game. And we know fine well that a lot of these players that are supposedly uh, the lower ranked are in better form than than some of the higher ranked. You're looking at the top eight in, in this uh, event. Rob Cross, early exit at the Worlds. Nathan Aspinall, early exit at the Worlds. 
James Wade, early exit at the Worlds. Peter Wright, early exit at the Worlds. So why would you be afraid to take these players on? They're only going to be playing in a first to 10 legs game against a quality opponent. So I think it does bring the likes of, uh, well, looking at that bottom half of the draw, Ratajski versus Whitlock. You wouldn't be against the winner of that against Peter Wright, would you really, at a price? Um, Daryl Gurney showed some great form. Dave Chisnell is an interesting runner, obviously. But a lot of people will be hoping that he can replicate what he showed at the Worlds. If Dave turns up in anything like that form, he'll have a real chance of winning this event. But we know the, the reservations over Dave Chisnell. And, of course, this was an event last year where Dave Chisnell was trialling glasses. And, uh, yeah, mm. it didn't last long, that experiment, to be honest. He was fiddling with them pretty much every time he threw a stray dart. Um, it was clear he wasn't comfortable with them. And despite winning his first match, he got beat in the quarterfinal 10-0 off Peter Wright. And, and the glasses were uh, were binned pretty swiftly after uh, so yeah, it, it's difficult to uh, difficult to see him ever going back to them, even if his sight isn't great. Um, and and judge it by the world, he doesn't need to, of course. Uh, Daryl Gurney, interesting runner. You know, you would expect him to beat Jeffrey Diswani. He looked bang in form, losing a last leg decider to eventual world champion Gerwin Price. He'll have his supporters. And Jose de Souza, well, he he, he walked the uh, Grand Slam of darts. Yes, he ran into Merv King in in fine form in in the worlds, but. He'll want to put that performance behind him. He plays Johnny Clayton, another player who was unlucky to go out in the last set to Joe Cullen, having had a good lead in that game. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, it's a field absolutely packed with quality. You won't get a higher quality field all year. So what a better way to start the darting year. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a almost like a, a mini world world championship repeat. Yeah, only a, only a month later, I'm I'm glad you've mentioned Jose de Souza because if and it is a reasonably big if um, he gets past Johnny Clayton, given his recent form when we last seen de Souza, he takes on would take on Van Gerwen in the second round. Now I've questioned Jose's um, form or lack of their lack of against the real big boys on TV. And obviously that that is that is one of them, you know, the world num- the now world number two, Michael Van Gerwen against Jose de Souza. We could learn a lot there um, about Jose uh, in his current form and and going forward as well. There's obviously some world championship demons that uh, that will be need to put right by some of these players. Um, Simon Whitlock in a rematch against Christoph Ratajski, he got walloped four 0 in the world championships the last time they met. He'll need to turn up there. Jeffrey Deswan was disappointing in the in the world championship. You know he's only the twenty. 20- second ranked player here is in a game that he will feel is winnable against Daryl Gurney. Adrian Lewis, the outsider of the whole field in terms of rankings at number 24 and odds, I think um, is, a, is around the 200 to 1 mark, Adrian Lewis. Um, takes on Michael Smith. Well, Michael Smith got question marks over him after his early exit um, at the first time of asking in the World Championship. So, yeah, many questions to to ask and answer. Um, and, yeah, obviously, it's going to be really, really one way that we're looking forward to. And like I say, three days, 24 players whittled down to one live on ITV. I mean, we're all in lockdown. There's not much more you could want. The only problem I've got with this tournament, Pine Man, is that it's my other half's birthday on the Saturday. So I'm oh. probably not going to get away with watching too much darts on that day. But um, I will knowing, probably... knowing your other half, I do not fancy your chances of no. getting away with that, to yeah, be honest. Exactly. I mean, I got away with more than I thought I would at the Worlds, as did yourself. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'll be looking at Aspinall um, as, a, as a bet and I'll be looking at Dimitri Vandenberg as a bet as well. Um, I think there's been some lazy bookmaking, to be fair, in this market. Um, it does resemble what the World Championship market looked like a month ago. And obviously, there's a lot happened since then. Um, for example, Peter Wright is just... It seems that they just put Van Gerwen in at first favourite, Gerwin Price in at second favourite, and Peter Wright in at third favourite for every tournament now. Vandenberg, you could say the needle's moved a little bit on him from a bookmaking perspective. And one that's gone the other way, um, I've already mentioned Bunting. I think he should be shorter. I think that's insulting, to be honest, the 125 to 1. Um, Jose de Souza, who was about the fifth favourite for the World Championship, didn't really turn up there. He's 40 to 1. Like I say, would have to take on Van Gerwen in the second round. But that 40 to 1 about Jose could look a, a big price in hindsight. But the two I'm interested in at the moment, Aspinall and Dimitri. Yeah, I, I, I'd be with Dimitri. And I'm bunting. I totally agree. I think it's, a, it's an insulting price and it should be taken. Because he, if he turns up in the form we know he's been in, he'll, he'll give it a good go. Um, I wouldn't rule out anyone confidently out of this tournament, to be honest. I mean, there's three or four you could probably sc- scratch on recent form. Um, but we all know that the, the, these are the top 24 darts players in the world. They can all turn up and win this event. So have a very serious look at it. Don't rule anyone out too lightly. It's a short format. Uh, 
and have a look about the players that come with a point to prove as well. Um, I, I, I'm never, never normally would say something like this, but I'm interested in Michael Smith. Interested in Michael Smith. I mean, of a big, big shock losing to Jason, or that will have hurt him. He's suffered for it in terms of ranking. He's suffered for it in terms of potentially losing his Premier League spot. I mean, if Michael Smith has gone away and really thought about where his career is going here, he could be ready to deliver a massive performance at this tournament. So, yeah, I think, he, think did you say 33, 33 to 1? It's 33 yeah. to 1. And, and with the Premier League having one of the 10 spots still left open, this tournament... Could have the could have a big significant bearing on who that last player is. If someone who is not currently in the Premier League nine is to win this tournament, like a Michael Smith or a Bunting, who have been in the Premier League previously, that could that could secure them the, the final spot. So so they'll be out to they'll be out to win it. And like I say, we'll be back with some more content. But that's a, just an early video from us and, and one that we're really looking forward to. So thanks for tuning in. Let us know who your early fancies are in the comments. Who do you think is going to win this uh, this tournament over the three days at the end of the month? Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys.